After seeing the price elasticity of the demand, we're now up to the income elasticity of the demand. A few things to note uh, that will be highlighted as differences between these two. So first off, when I think of income elasticity of demand, and we want to look at the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in income. We want to see whether as people get richer or poorer, how responsive will this be? Will it lead to very small changes, to very large changes? And if there's large changes, in which direction will it go? So the income elasticity of the man is calculated as the percentage change in quantity of the man over the percentage change in income. Whereas before we had the price elasticity of the man, which was our percentage change in quantity of the man over our percentage change in price of that specific good. So very similar, it's just the denominator that changes. The whole calculation process is the same as we use averages uh, as the denominator when, when we calculate the percentage changes. Okay. As we calculate this, we're going to notice that instead of uh, counting these as elastic, inelastic, or so on and so forth, actually in this case here, it's going to be allowed to be positive or negative, whereas before it was always negative due to the law of demand. Why can it be positive or negative? Well, if I think about it, it's going to be positive when they both move in the same direction. When the percentage change and quantity demanded can be positive, and we'll have at the same time quantity demanded goes up when there's an increase in income. So if you think there's an increase in income and there's an increase in quantity demanded, they're both moving the same direction and whether they're both going up or both going down, this is going to lead to a positive sign and such as we have here. Well, when both are moving the same direction that you consume more of a good as your income goes up, as we mentioned in chapter three, this implies that this is a normal good. It's a good that sees its consumption go up as you make more money. Whereas here we have this negative relationship. So this would be the case where, my percentage change in quantity demanded could potentially go down as my percentage change in income goes up. See, they're moving in opposite directions. Therefore, as you put one over the other, one will be negative, one will be positive. And this could be flipped as well, leading to a negative sign. And a negative sign is a sign of an inferior good. You may also see something that hovers around zero. If the income elasticity of demand were equal to zero, we could say that in this good is unresponsive to a change in income. So if this person becomes a whole lot richer or a whole lot poor, they will keep on buying this good just as well, much as before. So if you think about this from a, a, the idea of a kind of a spectrum, if I go here from plus infinity, zero, and negative infinity. That should be an infinity sign. I have this situation that if I'm here at zero, I'm unresponsive. If I'm here on this positive side, I'm a normal good. If I'm here on this negative side, I'm an inferior good. But if I'm negative 0 0.01, close to here, I'm not that responsive. I'm inferior, but I'm not that responsive. Same thing with positive, very small number. But if I compare a good that has income elasticity of the man of 0 0.5 versus one that has an income elasticity of the man of five, you can think that that one of five for a small change in income is gonna see a large change in the quantity demanded for that good. Whereas this one, not such a large change. So here we're really looking at the implications of changes in income. And if you're dealing with the different business cycles, recessions and booms in your economy, or you have a situation where some industries are closing or opening up, making the people richer or poorer than before, you really want to know the implications on the sales or the demand for your specific product that you are selling. So once again, we're just going to calculate one of these. And before I do so, on that same timeline I had before, I could add another specification. So I said, when it's positive, it's a normal good. But here we could split up that positive part. 
So here from zero to infinity, that positive part from zero to one, we're dealing with a necessity. And from one and above, we're dealing with a luxury good, typically. But the biggest thing is you have to remember is that you have normal good when it's positive and inferior good when it's negative. Okay. So let's calculate one out. If I have this situation here, once again, I have my original and my new. It doesn't really matter in which direction you go. So this could have been two different income levels, income level A and income level B. It doesn't really matter which one you choose as original or new, as long as you calculated that well and you go in the same direction. So if I want to go from point A to point B or from point B to point A, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the elasticity will be the same, but make sure you do it in the same direction for income and quantity demanded. So if I keep it as the way it is now and I calculate my percentage change in income, so income is sometimes referred to as Y, so that's why I was going for a Y here. Uh, percentage change in income, I'll have the situation that I am at 50,000 minus 40,000 divided by the average 45,000. And then my percentage change in quantity demanded, doesn't really matter which one you calculate first, even though that's the numerator is going to be again in the same direction. So I want to start as this point 50,000 or my B to my A or whatever. So here 50,000, I'll have 20 minus 10 over 15. And when I think about this here, as income is going up, quantity demanded is going up. So this total number should be positive because we're dealing with a normal good. And if I look at this number, it's positive. And if I look at this other number, it's also positive. So now if we calculate it out, what number would we get? Well, we would get a value equal to three. So my total value of setting this up divided by this would be equal to three if you calculate it out. And three would tell me, first off, this is equal to three is greater than zero, so I'm dealing with a normal good. And because three is greater than one, that good in question is actually a luxury product.